Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we will continue what we have started with, uh, Cauchy's functional equations. So in the previous video, we discussed the first Cauchy's functional equation, which was the additive one, f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y, and we found the solution and discussed that uh, function and its solution. And in this video, we'll continue with the rest of Cauchy's functional equations, and mainly we have three more. So this one we have discussed already, the additive one. This is the multiplicative one, f of x, y is equal to f of x times f of y. And this is the one that converts uh, addition to multiplication, f of x plus y is equal to f of x times f of y. And the one here, the final one, which does the opposite, uh, which converts multiplication into addition. So uh, we'll just discuss the these four uh, Cauchy's functional equations in this video. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So as you can see, I just made a simple chart in which I've organized the things or the equations that we're going to solve today. So the first one is equations, the first column the Cauchy's functional equations. And in the second one, the second column, we have the solution part. And in the third one, we have a proof, or actually a sketch of a proof for each one of them. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So the first one was f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y. And we discussed in the previous video that the solution of this one is f of x is equal to c times x, where c is just a constant that is uh, a real number. And we have proved uh, this one, and we've discussed whether we are solving it on Q to Q or from R to R. So we're done with this. So let's move actually to the second one, and the second most important one. Basically, we, uh, we just care about the first and second one in most of the uh, problems, because the third and uh, fourth one are actually rare and don't come a lot in math Olympiad contests. So actually, this is the first, uh, the second one, the multiplicative one. So f of x, y is equal to f of x times f of y. So what is the solution of this one? What is the function that uh, converts f of x, uh, of f, of f x, y, so the multiplication, into f of x times f of y? So it partitions them. And actually, this is easy to come up with. It is actually f of x is equal to x raised to power n. So x to n, of course, and n is uh, an integer. So actually, you can check out that x os, uh, x raised to, uh, actually, or x y raised to some power n is equal to x raised to n times y raised to n, and that means that f of x y is equal to f of x times f of y. So actually, this is the solution, and I will leave actually the proof as a homework for you because it's similar to the first one. So do it uh, as an exercise, and maybe you can post your solution in the comments below. OK, so this is actually the solution for the second Cauchy's functional equation. What about the third one? Well, the third one is the function that converts addition, f of x plus y, is equal to f of x times f of y. So it converts addition to multiplication. And if you think about this a little, you will actually see that the function is f of x is equal to c, some constant, raised to the power x. And of course, c uh, should be a positive real number. So c raised to x. You can check easily that c raised to x plus y is equal to c raised to x times c raised to y. So this is our function. And the fourth one, the fourth function, is uh, f of x times y. f of x, y is equal to f of x plus f of y. So it kind of uh, does the opposite of this one. So it converts the multiplication into addition. And this is uh, like the inverse of the, first one, of the third one. So it is f of x equal to uh, c, some constant, times the logarithm of x. OK, so uh, where, of course, c is just a constant, a real constant. OK, but the question is, how can we prove this one and this one? So this one we have proved already. 
This one I left uh, it as a homework for you. But what about this one and this one? They may be uh, complicated uh, because how can we show that f of x is equal to c raised to x and the logarithm? We're not familiar with these two. But actually, there is a beautiful trick and this trick introduces a beautiful idea that we are going to use a lot in later problems. So uh, I decided that I will show it to you. So the idea is to define a function g. So to define g with respect to f. So that means here, actually, if you just introduce g of x as the logarithm of f of x. And you might ask me, uh, why is this important? Why we have introduced g while we already don't know f? Well, actually, you can now see that g of x satisfies a very cool property that we can or we are familiar with. So let's take a look at g here. So g is the logarithm of, of, f, uh, of f of x. So what about we take the logarithm of both sides here? So uh, the logarithm of the first uh, part and the logarithm of the second part. But uh, before doing that, actually, you should check that f of x is positive, right? And this is easy because by just substituting uh, pxx, so substituting y with x, you will just see that f of 2 times x is equal to f of x squared which means that f of anything is just positive. So you can actually safely introduce g. So we, sh we shouldn't worry about that. Okay, so let's take the logarithm of both sides. So this is actually logarithm of f of x plus y. So this is g of x plus y, the left-hand side. But the right-hand side becomes logarithm of f of x plus logarithm of uh, f of y, right? So basically this is the right hand side is g of x plus g of y. So that means g of x plus y is equal to g of x plus g of y. But you are familiar with this, right? Take a look here. g of x plus y is equal to g of x plus g of y. So basically, actually, we have converted this one into this one, right? This equation into this equation using g. So now we know that g of x is equal to c times x. So that means logarithm of f of x is equal to c times x. And you can easily uh, derive this one, come up with this one. So f of x is equal to c raised to x for some cons real constant or positive real constant c. Okay, so that was the cool idea that we can use a function, introduce a function that uh, converts our problem into an easier one, which we are familiar with, and then just uh, crush it using the first one. Okay, so what about the fourth one? Well, in a similar way, here we have introduced the logarithm. Here we introduce the e of f of x. And in the same way, actually, you can just show this. Uh, so that means that uh, let's take e raised to the left-hand side and uh, right-hand side. So e of f of x uh, times y, e raised to f of x uh, y. That means this is g of x y. And uh, e raised to this one is e raised to f of x times e raised to f of y. So this, this is actually g of x times, uh, sorry, g of x is uh, times g of y. So g of x, y is equal to g times x, or g of x times g of y. So basically this is just the second one, right? Exactly. So the second one, which has this solution. So g of x is just equal to x raised to n. And you can easily just uh, come up with g of x as uh, c times logarithm of x. So the idea basically is that uh, you can always introduce a function, a new function g, define it with respect to f, and then convert this problem into an easier problem, and then solve uh, your new problem. So basically, these are the four Cauchy's functional equations that appear in uh, lots of problems that we are solving. So maybe we can convert our function to a function that satisfies one of these properties, and then we can easily come up with this one. But of course, we should be careful when we, when we are moving from R to R, because as you saw earlier in the previous video, here we can only move from Q to Q. But we cannot solve this from R to R unless we prove the function is monotonic, that means increasing or decreasing, or continuous, or the other stuff. So the question now is, how can we show that our function f is increasing? So we're just going to answer this right now. 
So now we move to the most important part actually of the lesson and that is how to prove or how to show that our function f is monotonic that is increasing or decreasing. So basically we started with the problem we have converted our function f or we have actually shown that f uh, the function f satisfies one of these two function functional equations so either f is additive or f is multiplicative uh, because the the third and fourth one actually don't appear usually in math Olympiad contests so we're just going to discuss these two so how now uh, to show that our function f is increasing or decreasing so sometimes they actually in the problem statement they tell you that f is continuous or f is limited so this means that you don't need to do anything just derive the Cauchy's functional equation and you are done but sometimes you are not and usually uh, or actually quite often you are not so you need to prove that your function f is increasing for example so how to show that well actually we can show that uh, or we can actually uh, instead of showing that f is increasing we need to show something else so let me simplify this so for let's take actually the first one so the first functional equation is f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y so how to show that our function f is increasing in this one well how can we show in general that our function f is increasing that means for any two numbers a and b two real numbers uh, such that a is greater than b we need to show that f of a is greater than or equal to f of b this is what we need to prove right f of a is greater than or equal to f of b okay so how can we show that well that actually means that this is equivalent to proving that uh, actually f of a minus f of b is greater than zero or equal to zero right okay but using the same functional equation we can notice that f of a plus minus f of b is actually so this is basically equivalent to showing that f of a minus b is greater than or equal to zero right because uh, if you here plug x as b and y as a minus b you will get that f of a is equal to f of b plus f of a minus b so f of a minus f of b is just f of a minus b right yes so actually all what you need to prove is that f of a minus b is greater than or equal to zero so how to show that uh, how to show that f of a minus b is greater than or equal to zero well what is a minus b well a minus b is for sure positive right because we have already here a is greater than b so that means that uh, what you need to prove actually is that f of positive number the f of positive number is always positive so you just actually it turns out that to prove that your function f is increasing you just need to show that f of x is positive for uh, for positive uh, real numbers so you just need actually to show that f of positive numbers is positive so maybe of course you cannot show it from this one so you need to go to your original functional equation and try to prove this just show that f is positive when x is positive or for uh, numbers that are positive you need to show that f of uh, these numbers is positive okay so this is the the methods to show that your function f is increasing for the first Cauchy's functional equation but what about the second one so what about the multiplicative one is it the same if we show that f of positive numbers is positive we are done well it turns out that no you cannot apply the same and actually in fact here you can already show that uh, f of positive numbers is positive because just by plugging x is equal to y by uh, substituting p x x you will get that f of x squared is equal to f of x squared so the right hand side is positive so that means the left hand side is positive so f of x squared which covers all positive numbers so that means f of x squared is already positive so 
Does that mean that we can always generalize our work? No. So we need to show uh, increasing that our function f is increasing in another way. So basically, let's take a look how can we use this one, this form, to show that our function f is increasing. So let's actually, to show that our function f is increasing, uh, we need to do the same thing. We need to show that for any two numbers, a and b, such that a is greater than b, we need to show that f of a is greater than or equal to f of b. Actually, let's first of all assume that the two numbers a and b are positive. And you can actually discuss the second cases in a similar way. Okay, so how to show this? Actually, to show this, you just need to divide by f of b, both sides. Because we have already know, uh, we already know that our, func our function f satisfies f of positive numbers is positive. And this is positive, and of course greater than 0. So you just need to show that f of a over f of b is greater than or equal to 1. Right? This is what we need to show. Okay. But you should notice that uh, f of a over f of b, this is just f of a over b. So it's similar to the previous trick. So f of a over f of b is just f of a over b. And the reason is just substitute x here with uh, b and y with a over b. So f of a of f b times f of a over b, this will become here f of a. So f of a over f of b is just f of a over b. Okay, so what does that mean? So we just need to show that f of a over b is greater than 1. Well, because a is greater than b, so that means actually from here, that means that a over b is greater than 1. Actually, great, strictly greater than 1. A over b is greater than 1. So actually here what you need to show is a, is a similar thing to here, but instead of showing that f of x is positive when x is positive, here you need to show that f of x is greater than 1 when x is greater than 1. So let's write this in a clean way. So you just need to show that f of x is greater than 1 when x is greater than 1. So you need to show that f of the numbers which are greater than 1 is greater than 1. If you can do this, then you are done. You can show that your function f is increasing. And thus, you can solve uh, the Cauchy's functional equation on r. So you can say that f of x is equal to x raised to n for uh, some uh, integer n. And basically, we are done. So this is basically the, the two ways to show that your function f is increasing for the first one and for the second one. So now we have covered the theory about functional equations or the theoretical stuff. And now we actually just can start solving problems that actually uh, depend on Cauchy's functional equations. And we have actually lots of them. So basically, we have introduced four Cauchy's functional equations, the additive one, the multiplicative one, and the other two, which are not uh, equally important to the first two. And we have also discussed how to show that our, your function f is increasing or decreasing, of course, in the same way. So in the next lesson, we are just going to solve a problem using Cauchy's functional equation. So if you like the video, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And see you guys in the next video.